Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Cartridge Talks, where we take two of your favorite cartridges, pit them against each other, and figure out which one is the best choice for your application. On today's episode, we're using Mark's Wisconsin Whitetail Special, a Browning BAR chambered in the venerable 30 odd 6, and Sling and Rick's very famous Ruger Model 77, chambered in 270 Winchester. That's right, it's 270 Winchester versus 30 odd 6. And this is Cartridge Talks. A few caveats before we compare these classic deer hammers. Number one, we've established an eight pound rifle base weight. Obviously these rifles are very different. They have different weights. Establishing that eight pound rifle base weight allows us to compare them equally. We're using Permagel for our bullet test medium to take a look at terminal performance and the bullets in the gel. Although an imperfect medium, it allows us to see the bullets and it's very consistent. We're using box posted velocities and box posted ballistic coefficients as well. So we're just using the factory numbers as we move forward with our testing. And this all in all really just standardizes the science that we're about to do. Okay, kicking this one off here, I'm on the bench with Mark's old relic, the Browning BAR chambered in 30-06. I'm shooting the 180 green Remington Corlocks as stated the deadliest mushroom in the woods. Hope this one shoots, eh, Mark? Yeah. We'll find out. All right, at the block, by golly, that is probably the best looking mushroom I've seen in a while. 21 and a quarter inches of penetration out of the 180 green. That is pretty darn good. Well, it doesn't get more classic than this. We got the Jack O'Connor Special, the 270, pushing a 130 grain Remington Core Locked. I'd love to know how many dead deer this combination is responsible for. Let's send it down range and see the results. Whoa. All right, as advertised, great wound channel, solid penetration, 22 and a quarter inches, in fact. Looking at this, you can see why a lot of folks use this exact same setup. All right, up next, 150 grain copper impact from Winchester, newer loading. Send this one out of the BAR and see what shows up. At the block, 31 and three quarters inches of penetration. Here again, not surprising for a copper projectile, they're known for their deep penetrative capabilities. This looks like it would do the trick. All right, it's time to heat up Sling and Rick's 270 again, this time with the Winchester Copper Impact 130 grainer going down the tube. Let's fire around and see what happens. One thirty grain Copper Impact's dead. Holy mackerel. I'd say that is Fascinating. Penetration wise, it did fantastic. But a um, couple things went on here. That projectile entered the block, the tip broke away immediately. The bullet did not expand at all. No. And then inverted at about that point in the block. And then the heel of the bullet moved backwards. I cannot say we've seen anything like this. I have never before. seen anything like this. All right, that initial shot of the 270 copper impact, the 130 grainer, just wasn't sitting right with us. So we want to give it at least one more try, shoot it into the block, see if it was at least somewhat of an anomaly. You know, we're only going to be firing two shots, so if it performs differently like it did out of the OT6, we'll at least know that it's not going to do that every time. So let's send one more downrange and uh, see how it does. Okay, here we go. This is what a person expects from this round. Extremely good performance, deep penetration, great disruption of the block. 
I'd say this is indicative of what a person should expect and could expect. Nothing wrong with the old 270 here. It did quite, quite the handiwork. We are back from the range and ready to talk turkey about these big game calibers. First up, Ryan, shootability. Huh? Well, Ryan, you should know. It's a made-up term by you. Uh, how are we calculating this number? Uh, I didn't make up the term, but let's talk about that calculation. So we're coming up with shootability uh, and, and I guess assigning a value to it in foot-pounds of recoil energy. We're calculating this using the projectile mass, the projectile velocity, the charge weight of the load, and then that weight of the firearm, that eight-pound base weight that Mark had mentioned earlier in the caveats. Smash all that together and we get what we're calling shootability in terms of foot-pounds of recoil. So. Looking at the 270, we're looking at 17.95 foot-pounds of recoil to the 30 out 6 is 22.96. Well, I guess when you put it in that context, they don't call it a 270 lose. 270 is winning this one. 270 win for the win. Mm. So the 270 win wins in regards to shootability. By the way, this joke will never get old, but let's talk accessibility. Now we're defining accessibility as the total number of factory offerings offered by the six major manufacturers of ammunition. Hornady, Winchester, Federal, Barnes. Nosler and Remington. Yes, them. Six. The 270's coming in at 49. The 30 out six, 86. That's quite the discrepancy. Stands to reason, Mark, 30 out six has been on scene for a few decades longer. Also was a military cartridge. Makes sense. The win goes to? 30 out six. All right, another important category for determining the winner of this race is versatility. And by that, we mean, what can you use this cartridge for? What is it capable of? When we're unpacking versatility, we're gonna look at bullet weight and bullet styles. By styles, we mean things like, you know, rapid expanding varmint bullets, full metal jacket, match profile target bullets, bonded hunting bullets, standard cup and core, or homogenous designs. Okay, looking at bullet weight offerings for the 270 Winchester, throughout those six major manufacturers, we see an average of three weight offerings per, and that weight range from 100 to 150 grains. Looking at the 30 out six, again, through those same six ammunition manufacturers, we see an average of six with a weight range of 125 to 220 grains. And in bullet styles, the 270 brings 41 unique style offerings to the table, whereas the 30 out six brings 43. So in applicational versatility, it still looks like there ain't nothing that a man can't fix with $700 in a 30 out 6 Mark. Very true, Ryan. I mean, no surprises here. The 30 out 6 is renowned as the king of versatility. But in a lot of ways, aren't these cartridges neck and neck? You know, maybe one just neck down a little bit. Oh, Mark, yeah, that's exactly correct. It is a offspring of the mighty 30 out 6 but an offspring, no less. 30 out 6 Winner. Okay, these charts and figures are getting a little dry. Let's pull out of the nosedive. We're gonna go into drop and drift, please. Drop and drift, long range performance, everybody's favorite, mine and yours. Well, maybe not yours, because you like to shoot things so darn close, Ryan. The 270, known to be fast and flat. At 500 yards, we're looking at 9.58 MOA of elevation correction, 5.2 MOA of windage correction, considering a 10 mile per hour full value crosswind and retaining 921 foot-pounds of energy. Pretty good. Yes. Let's talk about your 30-06. Shall we? The 30-06, in comparison at 500 yards, has 12.18 MOA of elevation correction, 5.3 MOA of windage correction, and retains 1,090 foot-pounds of energy. That's pretty good, too. That is pretty good. They're very close. They're close, but different, and they're doing uh, different things better or worse than one another. I suppose. But when it comes to drop and drift, gotta give it to the 270. Golly. She's fast and flat. Tired of charts and figures? Us too. Let's look at the gel. Leading off, or should I say letting off, the terminal performance discussion. Ryan, we have the Remington Core Locked, the deadliest mushroom in the woods. The 270, I shot the 130 grainers. The Yacht 6, you shot the 180s. A bit of a uh, weight differential there. We could have bulleted up in the 270 to 150 grain, and we could have bulleted down in the 30 Yacht 6 to a 150 grain, but 
a little heavy for a 270, a little light for an OT6. And uh, well, we just wanted to do 180s versus 130s. I think at the end of the day, they represent the two most common weights used. So when a person's thinking about using a 270, they're often gonna gravitate towards the 130, the 180s and the OT6. Now they get to see how they worked. Very appropriate below weight choices for the calibers. Yes. Now, one thing, Ryan, that I was surprised by was how closely I feel they performed on impact. The 270, I have 22 and a quarter inches of penetration. What do you got going on over there? Mark sneaks me by one inch exactly. One inch. That's not that much. It's not, but golly, it beats it out in penetration, Mark. If I was going to predict, I would have speculated the OT6 was gonna penetrate a little bit further. Why do you think that didn't happen? Ah, uh, frontal surface area. Okay. Yep, so that bullet is opening up to a larger diameter, there's no question about it. And in doing so, it's acting like a big giant sail brake and slowing it down. 270 being a little bit more narrow, gets in there a little deeper. The permanent wound cavities, at least to me, you know, eyeballing them, pretty identical as well. That's another thing that I thought would be a little more different. I, I will have to say, if I'm going to insert my opinion, the 270 looks a little bit more catastrophic, and I think that's impact velocity on the block. Mm -hmm. Certainly lost a little bit more material up front, right? Mm -hmm. So looking at the blocks closely, you can see a ton of fragmentation, secondary projectiles moving off and out into the block, less so with the OT6. The 270's bullet, I'm sure when we cut this open, we're going to find lower percentage weight retention than the OT6. But that being said, that looks more cataclysmic. I'm actually having trouble deciding which one we give the knot to. Yeah, we got an inch more penetration. Looking at the energy numbers, the OT6 is gonna take it away. There's no question about that. Looking at the wound channel though, and again, I, I, you know how I am about the 270 mark. Lukewarm, I've been public about that for a while. It kind of looks better. Kind of looks better, kind of looks the same. We got to give it to one, I guess. 270? Yes. Okay, but we didn't just test one bullet, we tested two. So there's a possibility we could pull the OT6 out of what seems like a death spiral and nudge it ahead, right? Let's have a look, shall we? Copper. <clears throat> Mark, we had a dickens of a time with the copper test on this one. We certainly did. Unprecedented. We both fired two shots. Well, why'd you fire two shots? Well, because I hit the block high on the first one, and it exited the block almost immediately. Uh, the second one, beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Uh, the 270, we had a bit of a bugaboo. One of the projectiles did not expand at all. Lots of penetration because it acted like a full metal jacket, but I'd say an anomaly. We fired a second shot and got the performance we expected. Now that we've talked about all the shots fired, Let's talk a little bit more about the results, Ryan. Well, Mark, you know I love copper. I like the way the bullets look when they come to rest in the gel. I like the wound cavity. Uh, this is super curious though, because if you're viewing this, the wound cavity on the 270 is very horizontal. The wound cavity on the 30-06 is very vertical. From your perspective, the 30-06 will look more devastating. Uh, I kind of don't agree with it. I think the 270 has it a little bit, but let's talk about penetration here. So the OT6 brought us 31 and three quarters inches into the block. This is certainly a lot of penetration. This is what we have come to expect and have found out of these tests using copper. Wound channels look exceptional. I mean, they're big, they're girthy. 270, oh, it hurts me to even say, Mark, how deep? 36 and a half. It's more. It is, and I actually think that up front, it looks like we got deployment of the projectile faster, we've disrupted more gelatin, and golly, we carried deeper through. We did carry deeper, but I would say your permanent wound cavity, I'd say, extends a little bit further. Like, uh, it's pretty thin, you know, once we get to about right here with the 270, I feel like you carry that a little bit more throughout. Very true, and I think that's just that, again, frontal surface area of that projectile opening mm -hmm. up larger. Those pedals on a copper projectile are gonna be very, very sturdy, and they're continuing on like a Ninja Bullet Blender through the gel or through your game animal that you're hunting. Good point. Up front, I like yours better. I do like the fact that it went deeper. Um, you know, some folks will say, hey, well, all that is wasted space and wasted energy. I disagree. Uh, I like a bullet that can go through and through a target, or if I have to track through a whole bunch of stuff to get to the good stuff, 
that is a projectile, this is a projectile that's going to pull that off. We've talked about it many times, not every shot angle is broadside and a bullet that drives can be a big asset. Looking at the overall performance of both, Ryan, I'd say when you're trying to crown a winner, we're splitting hairs. I think uh, both of these would have split enough hairs on an animal to do the job. What's your take? Who takes, who takes the cake on this one? For a 150 grain projectile versus a 130 grain projectile, the 130 is taking it away. I'm giving it to the 270. I can't believe I said that on television. I just don't know how that's possible. I Look, I don't either. I, it is what it is. I was going to say we don't make the rules, but we made the rules. <laughs> 270, win, wins. I guess. Oh, gosh. All right, my esteemed colleague, Mark, let's put a bow on this. Shootability. 270. Accessibility. 30-06. Versatility. 30-06. Drop and drift. 270. And terminal performance in both lead and copper. 270? Holy question mark. smokes. Okay, but I want to talk about these two cartridges, what we're going to do with them, the applications, do they work? I think they're fairly interchangeable. I think if we look at the game that you could effectively harvest with these, both of them are going to end up kind of right next to each other, right? They're very similar cartridges. Of course, the 270 comes from the 30 out 6 Some will say it's an improvement. You know I'm going to die on that hill um, and say the old out 6 is my favorite, but golly, that 270 puts up a compelling argument. No question, both cartridges are responsible for a lot of deer, elk, and black bears hitting the ground or similar sized game. Like you said, Ryan, somewhat interchangeable, but I think they do shine for different reasons and for different people. The 270, fast and flat. It's hard hitting, great disruption, and you're gonna alleviate a little guesswork on those longer shots. The 30-06, you can't deny that bullet palette, the ability to bullet up and take down some pretty big critters including large carnivores. A theme that I've noticed while we're doing these, Mark, is oftentimes the cartridges that are more favorable to the shooter are coming out on top. They are, is which it? is important. You have to put that bullet where you want it to go. Yes, I think that that is a very interesting thing. We are kind of pulling back from the horsepower is better, perhaps, and going into the more shootable, more efficient cartridge. I can't pull back from that entirely. I understand completely, which is why I am glomming onto the 30 odd six, possibly to my own demise. Not demise, demise is too dark. It's pretty Detriment. extreme, but you're not. Right. Because it's still shootable. It is. Are we crowning the 270? They don't call it a 270 lose. <sighs> they certainly don't. You've done well, old friend. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Cartridge Talks. This one, we pitted the 270 against the 30 out 6 and hopefully you're not as angry as I am to see that the 270 walked away with the win. Uh, I do hope, however, that you were able to glean some insight in this and maybe direct you towards the next cartridge for your next hunt. It could be a 270, maybe it should be the 30 out 6 Mark and I are going to cut into the gels on an upcoming podcast and unpack this a little bit further. See if we can get, uh, I don't know, sway the results a little bit. I'm definitely going to have to talk about my feelings a little bit, Ryan. I have a feeling that this is going to be our most contested Oh, I'm protesting. Outcome. I'm protesting too. Okay. Do we just become best friends? I think so. All right. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Cartridge Shocks. We'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below and tune in for the next one.